Hi, and welcome to this Wing Gruden 2 tutorial. My name is Eric Berglund. I'm CEO of IC Control Media and Sports. Today, we're going to have a look at how to connect the Quantum together with Wing Gruden 2 timekeeping and what things we need, etc. Um, we're going to start by looking at how the Quantum looks and what cables we're going to need, etc. So let's have a look at the Quantum. A quantum, in this case, I'm using a double Quantum. It looks like this. You can see you have some serial outputs down here. You have power, USB to control the quantum, backup printer, uh, harness input, etc. What we're interested in now is this one. This is the four serial ports here that we communicate with both scoreboards and in this case with Windrudan 2. From the quantum, we use a serial cable. It's a special made cable from us. It looks like this. You have in the quantum part a uh, connector looking like this. You have a small feather, so you push the side, pull it in into the quantum, and you can see you, it matters if it's like this or like this. So have a look at the quantum so you connect it correctly. The round connector is if you're using a scoreboard, you normally use this side and this side, right? If you're using it with Wing Rudan 2, you use this side and this one. And this one is not used, right? It's only there in case we're using a scoreboard as well. From here, we connect it to a RS422 modem. It looks like this. You can see it's the size of my palm. It should not look like this. This is wrong. This, this one is uh, 232. They come in a few different colors, but this one always looks like this. This is the communication interface to the quantum and being glued onto timekeeping. Uh, from here, so we connect it like this. See, have it correct. Screw the screw so it's fastened. And in the other side, it's a USB to the computer. Um, when plugging it in into the computer, if we at the computer side go to the device manager. Uh, let's have a look. In this computer, it's Swedish, so it's Ian Hetzantian. We have here port, com, and LPT. If it's not installed with the drivers, you will get a yellow question mark here at the top. And then go to our support page, and you will find the drivers. If it's installed correctly, we can expand this side. In this case, I have several different USB ports here, right? So we want to know which communication port actually is this blue one. So before we start, what we do is we go here, pull the cable out. We see that one of the numbers disappears in the list. We plug it in again. Oh, I have to manage that as well. And you can see in my case, it's number 10. Uh, in a normal scenario, in most of the cases, you're running this on your Wing Rudan 2 computer. It's not connected to a quantum or anything else. So it will only be one communication port. So you will only get one option in the Wing Rudan 2 timekeeping system. So this is a little bit over course, but it's good to have seen if case you would need it. After connecting this, we can open up the Wing Rudan 2 timekeeping. Uh, we recommend that you run it on the same computer as Wing Rudan 2. Uh, the reason for that is if the network goes down, it will anyway work. Uh, so it will anyway send over all the times, etc. Otherwise, you have to resend them in case of a network failure. Um, but you can, of course, run it on the same computer as the Quantum or any other computer as you wish. And it can connect network-wise to um, Wingrudan 2. Uh, so first, we go to Open Network Database, open the competition that we need. And then you have here a setting. Um, before I do that, I have to connect here to my quantum. Um, so let's have a look here in the settings. It opens up this window. So we can see on my timekeeping system, I have here a couple of difference. You should use the Quantum DH OSM6. This one is an old protocol that we used before. 
especially when we move from WinGluDown 1, which can only use this protocol. But this one is the one we recommend to be using in WinGluDown 2. We have a few different settings here, uh, if we should confirm it automatically, etc. Let's uh, not get into the depth of that at the moment. Here we have serial com. Um, as we saw here, we had com 10. Uh, as I said, in the standard case, you would only have one, but now we have multiple. We're going to use com 10, as we found out the blue one was. And then we select OK. So far, so good. And uh, no error that it's already occupied or something else. If another part of the software would have been open, we would not be able to push this button. And we can see here, it gets green, right? In case I would have selected the wrong one or something is wrong, uh, most of the time this would be red because it's open by another software or something like that. So, so far, everything good, right? The next step is to have a look at the quantum side. How, how does it look in the quantum side and what do we need to do there? Uh, so let's open up quantum timekeeping. We can see here already we are connected with USB to the quantum. I haven't synced the time yet. I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. I'm just going to go straight into uh, Erase and configure the I.O. ports so that it's correctly configured to WinGluDan. So we go into Erase. We have some test competition here. We can open up. Um, we can see this is an event that already have some, some things. Maybe we can select a new one, actually. Put a raise new. Let's just name it test demo. So we have a new event. We can see there's no previous events in this. Uh, with this new competition. We can directly go to I.O. So after we have done this once in the quantum software, uh, it will always stay the same. So when I create a new database, as you can see here, I already have a couple of different things here because I've connected different peripherals. Um, in the standard case, using WinGluDown, there's two things that you want to have in the I.O. settings. It's first the LST files. This is how we, from the WinGluDown 2 timekeeping system, get in the times into it, right? So we're using this C quantum import as an example. We can here, if we configure it, you can select here, DHLSD files, and then we can select the search path. Uh, this search path is where I'm gonna copy the files from WingRun2 timekeeping before I load them in into the system. Um, so it can be any path as long as I know and select the same one when I'm exporting from WinGluDown to Timekeeping. Everything good? The second part of getting times out from the quantum system into the WinGluDown, we're using DHOSM6. Um, as you remember, when we look at Timekeeping here, go to Settings, you have DHOSM6 here. And in the quantum, we also have DHOSM6. The important part here is the port number here, right? You have serial one here selected at the moment. Um, serial one comes from output one here, right? This is where the serial one comes from. If you would have connected it to serial two, you should of course have serial two. Leave all the other ones as standard and um, you can Enter if you want, send DNF and DSQs and button times if you wish. That means that you can also send button times and DNF and DSQs from the timekeeping. Um, but like this, it's all good. After doing these settings, you have to double check that this is green here, right? So you have to have this checkbox. As soon as I remove it, you can see it's not green anymore. Uh, and if we would go to timing here, you can see as soon as I remove the checkbox, I can't see it up here. So it should be shown here. If I put on, it will be green. If it's off, it's white here. But if I don't have the checkbox, it will not be visible here at all. So how to get actual times out from WinGrudan 2? and to get all the races out. 
So after I have seeded each session, I have an export option here. Uh, when running this on your um, Wingrodan 2 PC, so not the same PC as you run Quantum software on, you can either take it by USB or you can only install Wingrodan 2 timekeeping on the same Quantum system to only export this. In my case, I'm running it on the same computer, so it's a little bit simpler. So I'm going to use Quantum. I can choose sort by start time or sort by number. It depends a little bit on what your run rays are running, but if you have all set, both should be fine. Um, standard is used by start time, right? Then I can select a path. And here we have quantum import. You remember in the settings in the quantum, uh, let's go back to quantum, IO settings. LST files, you have here a search path. This has to be the same. If I select another path or I don't copy over them to the right one and then import, the risk is that I import the old race with old events. And we don't want to do that. So we select quantum import. It will remember its choice from last time you exported. So if you run it on the same computer, you can always run it. Um, you can select club field here because uh, in some cases it, it uh, matters what the club field are. Uh, if it should be short name, club name, code or nation code. It mainly matters when you're running it with TV graphics and sport in the box. Um, depending if you want to show a flag or a club logo, etc. So we can just push OK here in the standard scenario. Now it's exported all the things. So we can go into the quantum again, go to timing and we have LST files here. We right click and then push import schedule. You can see that it starts loading here. You can see here all Races coming in, and we have all swimmers and everything that we want. Another thing to double check that might be of interest to, to have a look at. Um, if this is not working or something is not working, a good thing to check is this 4 to 2 modem. See if I can bring it up into the picture. Uh, put it like this. I'll move you up in full picture. Uh, if we have a look here. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that there is a diode here? Over there. That blinks. Every time that when you have the quantum on and everything is open in the scoreboard and settings like this, it sends every se few seconds, it sends this keep alive signal. And you can see the diode blinking. If we would open a race, let's just open a race and run it. Uh, so I'm going to do a manual start here just to, to show you what happens. Uh, you can see that it's as soon as we send things. Soon data comes, it starts blinking. This is the indicator that data is coming and that the COM port is open and so on. So this is a good thing to check. If this doesn't blink, something else is off, right? You can stop uh, error proning. The thing that you're going to look at is the IO settings here in quantum to see that you have selected the correct scoreboard port and that you have the right cables. Um, a very common problem is that we get customer that call and they have used these and not this one. Or the second thing is that maybe they use this one, but they use the machine, they like, they bought a new cable because the old one was broken or something like that. And they may went just and bought a normal serial cable. This won't work because it's a special pin configuration in the RS-422 model. So think about that, especially when, if you would have a problem, otherwise always give us a call and we'll help you out to sort it out. But first of all, of course, try yourself. Well, we're good for the next case. With that, I thank you for today and uh, good luck.